Hello. Hello. So today I'm going to be building an EMF sniffer. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially a device that listens to electronic devices, uh, stuff that you've got around the house, like a laptop or a phone charger or an amplifier. And it lets you hear the electromagnetic frequencies that that device is emitting. So this wouldn't usually be audible uh, to the human ear, but a little device like this let you pick that up. So this is very simple. It's powered by a nine volt battery. It's an ever so slightly modified version of a schematic that is floating about on the net, which I will link in the description. The only difference between this and that schematic is that the schematic online is for a stereo device, whereas this one has both uh, the left and the right output summed together. So there's not much to this. You've got an on off switch, which is literally just bringing a nine volt battery in and out of the circuit. You've got two little antennas coming out of the top of here which are two inductors which are connected to the circuit board inside and a jack output and it picks up noises like this that's the sound of the uh, amplifier behind me let's pick up the sound of the camera that i'm recording this on then if you add some fuzz pedals into the mix you can make all sorts of wild noise Okay, so let's have a look at how I put this together. So here's the schematic I'm working with. You can see there's two inductors there and then they're both going into their own individual gain stages and then they're being mixed together with two resistors and go through a capacitor out to the output jack. This is all running off a nine volt battery. Uh, there's two resistors making a voltage divider for the VB line and that reference voltage is being fed to the non-inverting inputs on the op amps. I'll put a link to this schematic in the video description so you can download it. So I'll put this together on Vero board. Um, I probably will do some sort of PCB in the future. It's a bit awkward at the minute because I'm not sure with US tariffs at least how they affect small shipments like little PCBs. But yeah, Vero for now. Um, I'm literally just making this up as I go along. I tend to just start with the op amp and then mark out where the ground is going to be uh, with a sharpie just so it's visually obvious and just start poking resistors in. It's not the tidiest way to be doing this but it's uh, just an easy quick way to put circuits together. The only components that I knew needed to be in a specific place were these two inductors which I put both in the end of the board because I knew that I wanted them to poke out of the enclosure. I then soldered the jack in uh, so it looks like this at the minute and then soldered the battery clip straight onto the board uh, without the switch to begin with because I just wanted to test it quickly. So yeah, I'll grab a battery for this and if you don't have a Mike Matthews battery then you don't really build guitar pedals, I'm afraid that's just the rules. <laughs> So now I know that that works, it's time to drill the enclosure. As seems to be the theme for this project, I'm literally just making this up as I go along. Uh, I know I want two holes for the inductors, I want a hole for the output jack and a space for the on off switch. So I'm just going to pop that right in the middle. I'm screwing that in place here so I can figure out where I'm going to pop the Vero board. It was also at this point that I realized uh, I need to snip the power connector so I can add it onto the switch so it's not just constantly on draining the battery. I rarely use 9 volt batteries for things these days so I also don't really know how I'm going to suspend it in the case. I think I'm just going to leave it free floating for now. Uh, I grabbed some electrical tape uh, just to tape out a little bed for the Vero board to sit on so it wouldn't short against the case. It looks a little bit like this. Then it's time to pop the Vero board into the enclosure. So I just feed those inductors through the holes that I've made. They are slightly oversized. I'm not that fussed about getting the correct size. Once everything's in place, I'm soldering the switch into the circuit. I'm still a fan of hot glue, so I'm going to hot glue that board in place so it doesn't wiggle about, especially because it's poking out of the enclosure. Uh, I'm not sure where I put my hot glue gun, so I've just been using a lighter, which is probably an idiot's way to do it, but it seems to do the job, and it looks a bit like this. Yeah, so that's essentially all the building done. Uh, I just need to screw the back plate on, and it was also at this point that I realised I should probably crack the label maker out, because I don't want to leave the switch in the on position and drain the battery without meaning to. And we're done. Uh, let's go and listen to what we can pick up around the house, I reckon.